Hey everybody, welcome to episode 54. This is the daily vlog series from the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. And it of course is Friday, December 15th. And you guys know what that means, right? Friday, December 15th is of course the release date for LA Noir, the VR case files. And so I know a lot of you are probably scrambling to your computers right now. You are downloading LA Noir, the VR case files, and you're getting ready to explore an incredible new kind of world in VR when it comes to LA Noir, and, and that's super exciting. And we do have a little bit of LA Noir news a little bit later in the show, and I'll definitely get to that. But today is also the release of Star Wars The Last Jedi. Yeah, Star Wars The Last Jedi. And it's interesting, um, it's funny that I bring up this Star Wars thing because I was reading a comment earlier today on yesterday's video. Now this comment is by King Hell. And what King Hell said, I'll go ahead and read his comment. He says, agreed with everything you said last episode and this one, but Star Wars? Going to be awesome? We watching the same films? Not even bothering with The Last Jedi. Disney has murdered Star Wars, and now they are humping the shit out of the corpse. Luckily, I watch VR for news and opinion, which you're fairly on point with. So first of all, I want to say thanks, King Hell, for saying that I'm fairly on point with my VR news and opinion. And, you know, when it comes to Star Wars, when it comes to Star Wars, you know, I don't know why you would get the idea that I might be a Star Wars fan. No, actually, I'm not not really a Star Wars fan. This is uh, my son's old, old lightsaber thing from back in the day. But... Um, Actually, you know what? It's funny. In regards to Star Wars, what I'll say about the, the new Star Wars movies that are coming from Disney and, and all of that is that the first movie, the J.J. Abrams one, I thought that was pretty damn good. I, I thought that was pretty good. Now, I have to admit, I went into that movie expecting the absolute worst. And I came out of that movie pleasantly surprised. And I was pretty pretty pleased by what happened in that movie. Now, however, Rogue One, oh my God, I could not agree with you anymore. I thought Rogue One was terrible. I thought parts of it were laughable and embarrassing. Now, I was watching Rogue One. I didn't go to the movie theaters and see Rogue One. I didn't even get it on uh, like Blu-ray or anything. I waited till it like hit Netflix or something and then finally saw it. And when I was watching it, there were parts of Rogue One that I thought, oh, this is cool. This is really cool. I'm liking this. I'm liking this. And then there were other parts where I was like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? They didn't just do what I just thought they did, especially when they had um, that one general guy and they had a computer CGI animated version of him. As soon as I saw the CGI version of, of that general guy, Lord Tarkin or whatever his name is. When I saw that, I was like, oh man, they lost me. They lost me on this one. And um, so yeah, I thought Rogue One was absolutely awful. Um, as far as The Last Jedi, nah, I'm, I'm not running out to the theaters and seeing it like, like any time in the very near future. But I do want to check it out. And I think it is cool to check movies like this out in the movie theater and get that full movie experience but i'm not really that into it but it is star wars day my kids are kind of into it so they're probably going to check out the movie right away but why don't we go ahead and get into the first story of the day and so the number one story of the day is that rockstar hates amd yeah you heard it here first rockstar absolutely hates advanced micro devices. Now, what the hell am I talking about? Okay, what I'm talking about is the specifications for LA NOR, the VR case files. So yesterday, these specs came out, the minimum and recommended specs for LA NOR, the VR case files. And if you guys didn't believe that the new standard is a 1070, well, now you probably do. We've seen this repeatedly. We've seen this with Doom VFR. We've seen this with Fallout 4 VR. And now we're seeing it with LA Noir. The 970 is no longer the base. It is now a 1070. 1070 is basically the base going forward. Anybody that doesn't have a 1070, you're playing below the rim. You need to put on some high tops and you need to get above the rim. And I'm one of these people, so I know exactly how it feels. 
But um, yeah, the game has been changed. Specs are up and no longer are we in that minimum VR spec that it was a little while back. <clears throat> okay, but that's not the story here. The story here is supposedly if you have a computer that has an AMD CPU and you have an AMD GPU, for example, if you are on that red team, okay, if you're a supporter of the red team, you got all AMD going on in your computer, you are boned. You are out of luck when it comes to LA Nor the VR case files because this is what they have written down. I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. They say, if using an AMD Ryzen 7 CPU and an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 or above, you're good, okay? Or if you're using an AMD Vega 56 graphics card and an Intel i7-6700 or above, you're good as well. However, attempting to use an AMD CPU and GPU together to play the game is not supported at this time. Like that is just batshit insane that they are cutting off this huge gigantic segment of the market that might happen to have an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU. I mean, it's not like this is some abnormal CPU and GPU. There's lots of people that have AMD stuff in there. So that is really unfortunate. I feel bad for everybody that's on the red team, but um, man, that's kind of crazy. Rockstar really hates AMD. Um, okay, so that is the number one story of the day. Number two story of the day is this Oculus winter sale. Now, I know this happened yesterday, and I don't think I saw this before I was doing my show. So I didn't add this into my show yesterday, or it might have been happening like right at the same time I did my show. So sorry about not mentioning, on, mentioning this yesterday, but the Oculus winter sale is here, and let me tell you, it is a doozy, okay? But before I get into that, I want to tell you guys a little quick backstory. Okay, so back in... 2011, I became a PC gamer. I upgrade. I built a brand new PC, and a big reason I did was for Fallout 3. I wanted to play Fallout 3 with all these like high resolution texture mods and all this stuff. I had been playing it on the Xbox 360, and I wanted to play it on the PC. So anyway, to make a long story short, I jumped on the PC bandwagon and I became a PC gamer. And during these years that I was a PC gamer, 2011, 2012, and 2013, I got used to something called Steam sales, which we're all very familiar with, right? Okay, so then in November of 2013, the Xbox One came out and PlayStation 4 came out. And I was stupid, okay, and I jumped back to the console side of things because I've always kind of been a console guy at heart. I'm pretty much a console gamer that has flirted with PC gaming, and so I jumped back onto the console. So I got a PlayStation 4, and I got an Xbox One. Well, one of the things that I realized real quickly was that there's nothing like Steam sales. Like Sony doesn't do sales like Steam does. Microsoft especially doesn't do sales like Steam does. And I started to realize, man, I was so spoiled with Steam. And so over the years, I started to realize, man, Xbox, you know, they would have a sale every now and then, but they would mark like 10, 15% off a game. Nothing special and nothing that would like make you go, oh my God, these sales are amazing. And so why am I bringing all of this up? I'm bringing all of this up because you know what? I want to I wanna say that Oculus, I give Oculus some serious credit here because they are aggressive, man. They're being aggressive with these sales. They are competing with Steam sales aggressively. Some of these prices and how frequently they have sales, and then they have these flash deals, these temporary deals, 50% off, 60% off, 70% off, 80% off some of these games. They're very aggressive. They're very out there and after it when it comes to sales. And I congratulate Oculus on this because not all these companies do that. Sony isn't this aggressive. I mean, Sony has had some relatively decent sales lately. They've started to improve. Xbox is the worst. Okay. Microsoft is the worst. Like, I'm not even going to lie about that. When Microsoft finally joins the VR club and they have a VR headset for the Xbox, good luck getting any kind of major discounts because that's not going to happen. But anyway, back to this Oculus Winter Sale, 
I was blown away. I, I was looking at all these games. I'm like, okay, let me check out. Let me take a look at this Oculus Winter Sale, and let me see what are the best deals are on this Oculus Winter Sale. And I was looking at it, and I'm going through page after page after page. There's so many freaking games on sale in this Oculus Winter Sale. It's amazing. I, I'm I'm really blown away by this. Now I've highlighted 15 deals that I like, but there's way more than this absolutely way more but i went ahead and highlighted 15 of the deals that i thought were pretty darn good so i'll go ahead and run through these 15 deals and then we'll go ahead and move on to the next story okay so number one the invisible hours okay now i've said it a million times i don't believe the invisible hours is a game what the invisible hours is it's the first legitimate vr movie this is the first legitimate vr movie and the thing is its original price 30 bucks. Well, 30 bucks, that is a bit pricey for the first VR movie. And now it is chopped in half. This is $15. So you can go ahead and grab the Invisible Hours. And if you want to see the first real VR movie, a glimpse at the future of storytelling, this is it, man. I, I give much love to Tequila Works, much love to Gameworks for um, you know helping them out with this and making this whole thing possible. And the Invisible Hours at 15 bucks, highly recommended. Go check out the first legitimate VR movie. Okay, my number two deal, Blaze Rush. Blaze Rush is $2.50. You can't even get a Whopper for $2.50. You could barely get a medium fry for $2.50, but you can go get one of the very best VR games I've played, Blaze Rush. Blaze Rush is awesome. If anybody has ever played rock and roll racing way back in the days on the Super Nintendo, that's kind of what Blaze Rush is, but it has all these different modes. And when you're playing the game, you're playing with a controller and it's a seated experience. And I know that turns some of you guys off immediately right from the jump there. But when I'm there and I'm holding my controller and I'm playing Blaze Rush and I see these little cars that are driving around the track, I see the smoke and I see all the little things that are happening. It's like I'm looking at holograms. It's like I got a Magic Leap headset right now and i'm i'm just very impressed with blaze rush blaze rush is just fun on a stick if you don't own blaze rush and you have an oculus rift you absolutely owe it to yourself and the rest of the vr community to buy this puppy for two dollars and fifty cents because it's just ridiculous incredible value one of the best vr games i've played and just fun just pure fun okay number three is winlands seven dollars and fifty cents this is a great game. One of the nice things about Winlands is it'll run on, on all your computers. So, I mean, you could have a 970. This thing will run great. And it's the, the art style that they use and, and the way that they do the graphics. So many times we're complaining about it's blurry, it's fuzzy, it's these low resolution headsets, you know, all this type of stuff. But Winlands, the way they do the graphics in Winlands it basically hides all these arguments and it and it just works well and it goes with a simpler art style that works well and hides a lot of these limitations and I think Winlands is great. Number four, Vindicta, $9.74. Vindicta, man, I mean, if we were to have a discussion for the most underrated VR games of 2017, Vindicta would be way up there, man. It Honestly, I think I would put Vindicta ahead of Archangel as one of the absolute most underrated VR games I've ever played. I love Vindicta. When I was talking about Blaze Rush being just fun on a stick, right? Vindicta is kind of like that. In Vindicta, you can use this uh, arm swinging mechanic to move through the world, which I love that mechanic. I was doing it and I felt like I'm roller skating around this world of Vindicta. I'm roller skating around these rooms. I'm pulling out my gun. I'm popping these robots. Is it simple? Is it basic? Yeah, it's very simple. It's very basic, but it's just fun. It's fun. If you guys have played the compound demo and you really liked that because it was just pure fun and it was simple, well, Vindicta is kind of similar to that in a way. I thought the sound effects were great. Just everything about it. I really like Vindicta and I just, I'm blown away by how little 
publicity Vindicta gets. Nobody talks about it. Nobody cares about it. You can get this for $9.75. I think that is ridiculous. Okay, Wilson's Heart, 12 bucks. I honestly thought Wilson's Heart was a little bit overrated when it first came out. But 12 bucks. I mean, this is Twisted Pixel. It's a cool game. It's an interesting game. You, of course, have to deal with the fact that you don't have free locomotion and you're not moving around the world very quickly. You're kind of going from one little spot to another little spot. But if you're cool with that style, Wilson's Heart is a wonderful game. Solid, solid title. Killing Floor Incursion is 20 bucks, half off. I really like the visceral action of Killing Floor Incursion for 20 bucks. That's a solid, solid buy. Spark is only 10 bucks. Great deal here. Spark, I think, is a great game. I have this on PSVR. I actually got a code from CCP Games. They gave me a code for a PSVR version. I'm tempted to buy this with my own damn money just because I know Spark with the touch controllers would probably feel even better. So for 10 bucks, great deal. Witch Blood is only $275. Uh, this is a side scroller. You know, this is a sit down game with a controller and it's third person. And it's kind of like you're playing like a Castlevania or something. You have this diorama that's in front of you and you can kind of see your character moving around and going through the levels. Thought Witch Blood was really good. Kind of Metroidvania style with Witch Blood by Hidden Path Entertainment, by the way, who's uh, they're coming out with Brass Tactics in February. Racket NX. 12 bucks one of the best vr games we got going no question about it twisted arrow six bucks bloody zombies five bucks space pirate trainer nine bones space pirate trainer easily one of the 10 best vr games of all time space pirate trainer is just so solid it's so polished it's so dialed in it's just butter smooth man you go in there everything has been refined to the 12th degree it's a well-oiled machine Operation Warcade is seven dollars. Narcosis is eight bucks. Headmaster is nine bucks. So those are fifteen games that I've highlighted highlighted there. But I mean, I could have done fifty. I mean, there's so many games that are on sale on this Oculus deal. It really is amazing. Now I look to try to see when does when do these deals expire? I don't know. I went to the Oculus blog. They didn't even have a blog story on this that I saw. Um, so I don't know exactly when these deals are over, but this is the winter sale. Hopefully it'll last for a handful of days, you would have to imagine, at least throughout the weekend, I would think. So um, if you guys don't have some of these games, definitely snap them up because these deals are just too good. I mean, we are being spoiled. It is Merry Christmas to us and take full advantage of this is what I say. Okay, so the next story we got is YouTube VR has come to Steam. Now, this is kind of a beta thing, and it's not like a fully polished version, and so they let you know that. And then also, there is no Oculus Rift support at this time. Now, at first, I didn't know that, and I downloaded the YouTube VR, and I wanted to try it out because I've tried a number of video players and none of them really work that great from what I've seen. And so I thought, well, if they have this YouTube VR specific app, maybe I could watch some stuff that is on YouTube, some VR stuff that is pretty good. So I thought maybe I would check that out. I tried opening this up a couple of different times. It never opened. It just crashed, never opened. Of course, then I found out later, oh, this doesn't have Oculus Rift support, which is kind of a side note thing. Has anybody else noticed that there seems to be a lot of things coming out that just don't support Oculus. It's just kind of weird because so many people have Oculus Rifts. It's basically half of the PC VR market, if not even more than half after all these sales and promotions have increased its market share as well. Yet it seems like we are getting experiences here and there that just don't work on Rift, or if they do, they're very hampered and they have some issues working on Rift. So that's kind of interesting, but yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have tried this YouTube VR. Has it worked out good for you? Um, I haven't been able to try it yet, obviously, so I don't know, but I am curious about it. Okay, next story, Zombie Riot. So this was free yesterday. I hope everybody grabbed it. I don't know if it's still free. Uh, didn't check that, but I did get into this game. I did try it yesterday, and I'll just give you guys a quick take on what I play to this. So this kind of reminds me of like zombie training simulator 
it kind of reminds me of Brookhaven Experiment, except if if it was like the rated G version of Brookhaven Experiment, kind of like a family friendly version of Brookhaven Experiment. It, it's a classic wave shooter. You're basically standing in one spot. Zombies will come at you in a, in a wave of zombies and you have to deal with all the zombies that come at you. And you know what? I thought it was pretty fun, but there was nothing. I'm glad this was free is what I'll say because there was nothing here that really stood out to me. Um, I guess the one good side you could say about it, it is it's very colorful. There's a lot of neon colors. There's a lot of bright colors. It's very vibrant. So it's vibrant. It's colorful. The sound effects are pretty decent. Um, but nothing to write home about here. I, I don't think I, like if this was $5, I don't know that I would recommend anybody to buy this for $5. So I'm glad that it was free. Uh, it's definitely cool. It, it's worth trying out. And I'll probably try it a little bit more uh, in the future as well. But but wasn't too blown away by Zombie Riot. So there's that. Um, okay, another little story I have here is VR the Diner Duo. So this game has been out on PC VR for quite a while now, but it's in the news for a couple of reasons. First of all, it arrived on PlayStation VR today, I believe, and the PC VR versions have also been updated and improved. There's a new bakery option, uh, where you're operating in a bakery and there have been lots of performance improvements to the game lots of miscellaneous performance improvements the game also now supports the oculus sdk so you can run it in native oculus sdk mode and it's available on the oculus store now it has just arrived on the oculus store so you can go ahead and buy it officially on the oculus store if you want but even if you have the steam vr version you can run it in the native Oculus SDK. And the nice thing about that is you might get a, even some additional performance benefits running it in the actual native SDK. But supposedly, overall, the game has been improved as well. I actually have not played VR at the Diner Duo, but it does look kind of interesting. It's one of these games, though, where it kind of goes to the idea of controlled chaos where you start off just doing some basic things and then it gets more and more chaotic and you're scrambling and it's kind of this panic thing which to me those games are fun the first day or the first like game session that you play them but i don't know that i like to repeatedly go back to stuff like that i remember playing uh dead hungry um, a demo for PlayStation VR, Dead Hungry, where you're making hamburgers for these zombies, kind of similar to VR The Diner Duo in certain ways, and it gets really chaotic, and um, which is fun. It's fun in a short burst. I just don't know that I want to play it over and over and over again. So there is the VR Diner Duo, and if you're a PlayStation VR gamer, you can go ahead and grab that now on PSVR. Okay. Another little story, we got Payday 2 VR has a brand new update. This is update 1.4, and they have added smooth locomotion. Well, some type of version of smooth locomotion. I'll go ahead and read what the developers wrote on their Steam page. They say, as some might have seen on our Twitter, we are bringing direct movement to, pay to Payday 2 VR. You can now choose to play with either Dash plus direct movement or dash only. With this update, we also updated the How to Play Payday 2 VR version 2 thread on our Steam forum. It will now reflect the new movement system and better represent both HTC Vive and Oculus Rift controllers. Remember what I was saying before, how there's been a number of things that don't really support Oculus Rift right away? Payday 2 was kind of like that. You know, it didn't really support Oculus Rift very well in terms of like controllers and stuff like that. I have a little secret to tell about Payday 2 VR. I actually deleted this off of my computer. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you guys and say I tried playing this a number. See, I've never, I was never a Payday guy, so Payday wasn't my bag to begin with. But I tried playing this a number of times, and I don't know, it just didn't speak to me. I know there's people that rant and rave about Payday 2 VR, and they think it might be like the best thing that has hit VR in months, many months, or even years, and, and they just love Payday 2 VR. And I'm happy for those people, and I, I wish I was one of them, but I'm not. I don't know. I just I go into it, and it just doesn't do anything for me. Of course, I'm not into multiplayer either, so that's a huge part of it. Um, but I don't know. It just 
just didn't jive with me. And one of the reasons I deleted it is it's huge. It's like 45, 46 gigs. And I was downloading some other stuff and it said I ran out of space and, and I was just looking for big games that maybe I wouldn't play very much. And so I deleted Payday 2 VR. Can you believe it? Um, but yeah, I did. So anyway, that's that one. Um, all right. Um, Basically, the last little story I have is L.A. Noir is live. It is available now. There have been some complaints, though. I was reading a thread yesterday on the Vive subreddit where they were talking about how basically you get these seven missions, right? These seven VR missions. And this one guy was really talking some smack about it because he was saying, look, three of these seven missions are basically tutorial missions, Okay, so you're really only getting four legit missions that are not tutorials. And then he said, of the four that you're getting, some of them will not make logical sense without playing some of these other stories, story missions that aren't included. So when you play L.A. Noir, um, it's going to be a bit confusing if you don't already know what's going on with some of these other story missions. Obviously, we don't know how they'll handle that. Maybe they'll give some kind of... Uh, little cinema that will explain things for the missions that we don't get to to make that uh, more understandable. But basically, he was talking a lot of smack, saying, look, these seven missions are kind of lame because three of them are tutorial and, and all of that sort of thing. So don't know what the deal is with that. I do know that I will be trying L.A. Noir, hopefully trying to play it. Again, I'm way below min spec, but I will try to get this thing up and running and you know, I need to step up my game. There's no question about it. I need to get a new video card. No questions about it. And then the last final little thing, I continue to play Fallout 4 VR. Although yesterday I had two different times I tried Fallout 4 VR, no sound. Just completely no sound. And then the third time I tried it, sound. Yay, sound. I don't know. It's weird. Because you would think if it was a a very specific problem there would always be no sound but then there was sound um, so don't know what was up with that I'm in this situation where I just talked to that guy in Concord you know the power armor and all that I'm not using the power armor I don't really want to use the power armor and now I'm outside that building and there's a death claw and I believe I have to kill this death claw the problem is my gun only has eight bullets in it and when I go to pick up one of these other guns for some reason, when I go into my weapon tree, I don't see it. Maybe I need to go into the menu and add it to the weapon, the, you know, the, the selection of your weapons. I don't know, man. I'm having problems with some of these menus and stuff. It really is clunky to play this on the Oculus Rift. Now, the good news is all those uh, edits that I made to the INI file, the game is playing a lot better. It's playing a lot smoother, and I'm having much better performance, so that's the good news. The bad news is the controls are still really borked on the Oculus Rift, and that is unfortunate, but oh well. I will continue to play Fallout 4 VR. I'll continue to bang away at it. Definitely going to try some L.A. Noir, hopefully later. And so I'll be able to talk about all this stuff on Monday. But basically, guys, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. This has been episode 54 of our daily vlog series for the VR Game Rankings YouTube channel. Make sure to leave a comment. Make sure to go ahead and like the video. Definitely subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed. We are going to be bringing you VR news and notes Monday through Friday. Every week, every weekday, we're going to bring you guys this stuff and we're going to try to do the best job that we can. So definitely subscribe to the video, like the video, tell a buddy about it, all that type of good stuff. Have a wonderful weekend and I will, of course, see all of you guys on Monday. So have a great weekend. Take it easy. Later. Later.